Hi, my name is Philippe Golden. I'm a researcher at Stanford University, and I'm sorry that I was not able to come to Holland, but I'm very happy to be able to use YouTube and to present uh, this talk. And I hope that it's stimulating, and I look forward to any and all questions. So today I'm going to be speaking about the neural bases of, and temporal dynamics of cognitive reappraisal and expressive suppression, two different forms of uh, emotion regulation, or regulation of negative emotion. In life, there are many different complex situations. So in this example, this is a really powerful moment when there's a team of doctors who have to stay cool. To lose their emotional balance in this moment will not only influence their professional ability to conduct the surgery, um, but also will influence their colleagues and uh, the team as a whole. So there are many different kinds of life situations where it is important for us to remain attentive, emotionally uh, aware, and to stay in balance by using different kinds of emotion regulation techniques. When we speak about affect, uh, regulation. There are many different ways to work on affect. One way is to use coping mechanisms, whether it be emotion focused or activity or action focused, um, emotion regulation techniques, uh, mood regulation, um, or different kinds of defenses that may occur automatically. Here, today, I'm going to be focusing on different, two different emotion regulation techniques. Emotion regulation is not something that's new. Nearly two millennia ago, Marcus Aurelius said, if you are distressed by anything external or internal, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it. And this you have the power to revoke at any moment. So emotion regulation is truly a fundamental component of the human experience. James Gross, one of my mentors, has defined emotion regulation in the following way. The initiation of new or the alteration of ongoing emotional responses through the action of regulatory processes. What does this actually mean in terms of a process model? How does this play out and what are the different conditions and moments uh, where we can intervene with different forms of emotion regulation? Well, <clears throat> in this model developed by James Gross, um, this process model, I've actually created an example. So say there's a person named Suzanne, and Suzanne has to decide, will I go to the bar tonight, or will I stay home? So this is what's called situation selection. And where we choose to situate ourselves can powerfully influence what kinds of emotions we might generate. Having decided to go to the bar, Suzanne then has to decide, am I going to sit alone at a table, or will I sit with other people at the bar? This is situation modification. So in the situation, I can modify specific parameters by making decisions about what I'm going to do. Having decided to sit at the bar with other people, the next component is attention. Does Suzanne decide to pay attention to the music that's playing in the background, or does she pay attention to the people right next to her who are talking, who are having a conversation? So this is attention deployment or attention allocation. And then the next component is having decided to listen to the people, she then might think or have a belief or interpret in different ways. So for example, she could think, oh, they're not interested in me. That's one way of thinking. Another thought could be, I do have something to contribute to this conversation. And this is the cognitive change or cognitive interpretation that can strongly influence the types of emotions that will or will not arise. So I do have something to contribute. This is actually what we call cognitive reappraisal. Thinking in a way to modify the meaning of a situation, to make it less negative, or in some cases, more positive. The final component here is response modulation. So having generated an emotion of either fear, worry, anxiety, <clears throat> one, one way to respond to that is to either avoid, look away, inhibit, interacting interpersonally with other people. And this we refer to here uh, as suppressing the expression of emotion by not showing what you're feeling. So I'm going to be focusing in this talk on these two specific types of emotion regulation. To think about it a little bit more deeply, cognitive reappraisal, 
thinking is considered to be thinking in a way to modify or reinterpret the meaning of a situation to make it less negative or less toxic. Numerous studies have shown that using cognitive reappraisal results in reductions in negative emotion experience, negative expression, reduced autonomic psychophysiology, and reductions in emotion-related brain regions like the amygdala and the insula. In contrast, suppression refers here to actively inhibiting the display of emotion experience on the face, not showing what one is feeling. This has uh, been associated with reductions in negative expression, increases in blood pressure and skin conductance, and relatively no change in the negative emotional experience. So these two different forms of emotion regulation obviously are instantiated in the brain. So pioneering work by Mary Phillips, Helen Mayberg, Wayne Drevitz, uh, even Kevin Oxner and other people have begun to delineate brain systems in which emotional reactivity and different forms of regulation are instantiated. So here, when there is a threat stimulus, this quickly triggers an a, a shift in affective state. For example, anxiety, fear, arousal, worry. And this has uh, been linked to uh, a, the limbic system, which is a distributed set of brain regions that are implicated in emotion detection and emotion awareness and, and emotion generation. So this then sends very rapidly a signal, bottom-up signal, hey, something is threatening in my environment. There's something that is causing me threat. This quickly activates cortical regions where different types of regulatory processes can be uh, activated. So for example, attentional control or cognitive control as means to then exert top-down modulation and thereby change the trajectory, be it the duration, the intensity, the quality of the ongoing emotional experience, all in the service of being able to experience emotions, not lose control, and to be able to um, actively modulate or shift components of the emotion experience so that one can remain um, well-balanced. In psychopathology, this the fine-tuned working of these different systems and their inter interactions often go awry. They become dysregulated. 